This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and while 2020 has not been one of the best years, it has been a flipping good year for phones. This is the Moto Razr 5G. Already, in, you know, just in February 2020, which seems like a lifetime ago in so many ways now, they came out with the first generation. So here we are now, the beginning of October, and they already have a second generation. Now, when the first generation came out, I didn't even do a full review of it. Here's the story that you might have even seen my first look video where I went and looked at it in the store. I went to a couple of stores, and the way the display was designed was so fragile. It was like a piece of floating cellophane on that you could pull off that inner display and lift up above the uh, hinge mechanism that uh, both stores, actually within 24 hours, the displays were broken, kind of destroyed. So, you know, Moto didn't get us one. And I said, you know, I'm not even going to buy one of these to review it because that's kind of dead in the water to me. And the specs on the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip were better and they were priced about the same. So I was ready to dismiss this one until I saw it and how much improvement they made. The durability of this, the improved mounting of the inner display. Other things that we're going to look at it now. But first, a shout out to our sponsor, Trend Micro, and their home network security device. This affordable, small, and easy to use device, well, will protect your home network. And these days, with so many people working from home and kids schooling at home, that's even more important. Plug it in via the included Ethernet cable to your router, and you can set it up with an Android or iOS device, smartphone, tablet, you name it. So it blocks malicious files and websites, does virus protection, and of course it's a firewall as well, because if your router came with any kind of firewall, it's probably pretty weenie. And beyond that, it can help keep your kids safe. You can do things like set limits, like no YouTube after 10 p.m. at night. And this is per device kind of blocking and control that you can do. Also, you can do things like block apps that you don't want your kids using. You know how that can sometimes happen, so yay that. It also protects all devices on your network. Your smartphone's probably reasonably secure, but things like your Internet of Things devices, your smart fridge, your robotic vacuum cleaner, your doorbell, they might not be so hacker safe, so this is going to keep you safe. Be sure to visit the link in the description to save on the Trend Micro home network security device. Now back to our video. All right, so here's the deal. It's Right now it's $11.99 if you buy it from Moto Direct, Best Buy, or Amazon if you're in the United States. Carriers will sell it for $13.99, but they have a bunch of trade-in deals and stuff. I have a feeling that probably in the end it's going to be an $11.99 phone and not the $13.99 so-called list price, but we'll find out. That would make it a little bit attractive versus the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5G, you know, a couple hundred dollars cheaper. Okay, but it's still an expensive phone. And I know there are always those of you out there who say, I wouldn't pay more than $500 for this or something. God, I'd hate to meet you on Craigslist and have to negotiate with you. Folding displays are still very expensive. And then there are the duo people who say, it doesn't even have two displays. Well, yes, it does. It has an outer display as well. And that's another thing that's improved on this. It's an 800 by 600 pixel display, 4 by 3 aspect ratio, and it's a glass OLED display clad in Gorilla Glass 5. And they've actually given you more things you can do with it. Instead of just swiping to scroll through your notifications, standard normal Android style, you know, tap them to maximize them and look at them and look at your email and a few things. You, there's actually an option now to run any app you want on the external display. Not that running YouTube at 800 by 600 is going to be, you know, the best experience you've ever had in your life, but it's remarkably handy. Say, for example, I use a grocery shopping list called AnyList, and sometimes I just want to scroll through real easy and not even have the phone open, especially in COVID days where you have to disinfect your phone and stuff, so it's easier to clean the outer display. There's all sorts of things. If you're replying to text messages or emails, they even ship it, of course, with a game. It's a retro game that you can play on the outer display, and I've seen people do crazy things like play PUBG on the outer display. The point of that isn't that you're going to be using that all the time, but you're probably going to use it more than you think, and it's the biggest selling point versus the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5G, which otherwise just has better specs in so many different ways. But with that one, you get just that itty little strip, you know, which just shows you a little notification icon. So you know that there's a mail or there's a text and that's all about it. And you have to keep opening it up to look at it. So for a lot of people, that kind of kills the joy of it. With this one, you can actually read all your notifications, respond to a text message, respond to an email. Uh, you get the idea. So it's Great, actually, surprisingly. And I like the Galaxy Z Flip a lot. 
While we're talking about the specs, this one has the Snapdragon from Qualcomm 765G. That's a 5G chipset. And that's the upper mid-range or lower end of high end, depending on how you want to look at it. So uh, the Z Flip has the 865 plus processor, so it's a bit faster. But Moto's optimizations in their software that I'm going to talk about, they're really good at mid-range phones, and they have been forever in upper mid-range phones. They do such good optimizations that you don't feel like you're using a slow phone. Sort of like the same way with Pixels, right? Anyway, beyond that, you have 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. There is no micro SD card slot. There isn't one on the Z Flip either. There's just not room for that sort of thing. There is no wireless charging. That one kind of hurts. The Z Flip does have wireless charging. I know a lot of you folks love that. Z Flip even has reverse wireless charging. And sorry to keep mentioning it, but it is the only major competitor out here in the folding phone space. So, yeah. All right. You've got no headphone jack here, but it, you do get a little dongle, USB-C to 3.5 millimeter adapter in the box. So those of you who want that, it supports Moto's turbo charging, which is 15 watt charging, which is kind of like standard charging these days. For cameras, those are improved as well. And you know, Moto might not have the best cameras on the block, but at least they're trying. So outside we have a 48 megapixel, and that's a quad pixel binning. So a pixel bins down to 12 megapixel, with a Bayer kind of sensor going on. Pretty fast f1.7 lens, single camera solution. Inside there's a 20 megapixel, same pixel binning, quad pixel kind of arrangement going on there. You can shoot 4K video up to 30 frames per second on the outer screen, and the outer screen has OIS. You can use the outer screen to do lots of cute party tricks and sometimes useful things. Uh, you can actually display what's being taken on the outer display. So say you're taking a picture of somebody else, they want to see how they look, you can do that. If you want to take a picture of yourself using the higher resolution camera, you can do that because you can use the outer display as the viewfinder. And there's another little trick where it just shows happy smiley faces on the screen. So if you're trying to make particularly kids or something like that laugh or giggle or whatever when you're taking their picture, you've got that too. So how are those cameras? Well, they are not going to make you ditch your iPhone or your high-end Samsung phone, but they definitely are improved. Uh, the OIS, unless it's not active in 4K mode, and Motorola doesn't state that, sometimes that's the case, it's not as smooth as it could be. Mostly, I would say that colors are a little bit muted on this, and it has problems with high contrast. That's something that could be addressed with a software update. I don't know if they ever will, though, but on sunny outdoor scenes, uh, wherever the sun is shining, it's going to look a little bit whited out. Uh, the default Google Photos app now has an auto-fix feature that works pretty well to bring back some of the contrast and the color to the shots. It's like the auto HDR is kind of overdoing it. If you've ever seen HDR that's taken a little too far and the scene loses contrast but gets really crispy details, this one does get crispy details. I mean, if you're an average person who is not really into the camera that much, you'll probably love this camera on the outside. And the inside one's more than good enough for Zoom and other torturous video conferencing experiences and selfies and all that sort of thing. But if you're a real camera aficionado, well, not even the Z Flip has superb cameras there. It's kind of like S10 cameras on that one. You'd have to look at something like the Galaxy Z Fold 2 with its triple array to start moving up in the world of foldable phones with great cameras. All right, let's go back to the star of the show now that we've talked about the outer display, which is just awesomeness. It's a plastic OLED display. It's not ultra-thin glass like Samsung uses. You know, in some ways, I'm actually okay with this because ultra-thin glass can shatter. So the one thing I actually liked about the plastic display that was on the original Galaxy Fold and, well, it's Moto is still using is if you drop it, that's one thing that's not going to shatter at least. It is an OLED display, and the resolution is not it's an oddball resolution. It's not quite 1080p across the narrow area, which is too bad. Uh, the screen size is a half an inch smaller, measured diagonally, versus the Z Flip 5G, or the original Z Flip even. So that's a little bit of a hurt. But honestly, I didn't really feel like it was all that small, even when using the on-screen keyboard. It's a pretty nice looking display. It does have some glare outside. It's that plasticiness factor. Um, it doesn't feel squishy because Motorola has two very large plates, and you'll be able to see them when the screen is off. I'll move it around so you can see this. Two large plates on the top and bottom section right underneath the plastic display that keep it very firm, and they've tightened it up so it's even more taut. And the center section is where it gets to move down and into the inner hinge assembly, so you'll see two very faint creases instead of the very pronounced kind of gully that the Z Flip and the Z Fold 2 have. It's a nice enough looking screen. It doesn't feel spongy. 
that's the good part. Uh, the fact that they have anchored it so much better down is the most important thing to me. This is not something, unless you're a real fool and a tool and you try to destroy it, it's not something you're going to accidentally destroy, which the original one, really, I don't know how you could not accidentally destroy them. It's recessed down further. There's a, We've got plastic bezels around the edges to protect it, and where the hinges are open a little bit, you can see the little stainless steel gears. Even there, it's tucked inside when it's open, so it's not like you're actually going to catch it with a fingernail by accident and pull it up. Phone is made with 7000 series aluminum, stainless steel in the hinge, and Gorilla Glass 5 on the outside. I didn't in any way feel like durability was going to be an issue. Yes, it's a plastic display. Don't poke it with your fingernail. I would say that this one's not going to do as well as, say, the Z Flip or the Fold 2 in terms of if you rub its face into some dirt, there's a little opening by the sides of each hinge. Some dirt might get under there. There is none of that hideous, creasy, cracky <laughs> sound that we heard on the original one, but it is still folding plastic. So you hear a little bit of it, you know, the sound of plastic folding, I guess, is the best way to put it. But that, I think, is kind of normal. One thing I won't complain about is this is a very glossy phone. It's available in three colors. Gold, a kind of silver color that's supposed to be the retro color like the older razors, and uh, the one that we have, which is pretty much black. Fingerprint magnet, very slippery. Totally needs a skin, or if you're into cases, a case. But other than that, very easy to hold, pretty small. Of course it is. That's the point of the phone, right? This is one for those of you who just say, I'm getting a pocket vasectomy every time I bend down with my Galaxy S20 Plus in my pocket or something like that, right? Unlike Samsung's design, there is no gap when it's closed. It folds kind of tight as a profile, sort of like a bullet train from the side. In fact, uh, one of my staff members actually said it's kind of, well, hard to open because they're used to having a big space to stick their finger in there, but it's really not too hard. You'll get used to it. This time around, instead of just being an eSIM because it was exclusive to Verizon in the United States, it's not like you really were going to switch carriers with it. It's available on AT&T and T-Mobile. It is compatible with Verizon, but it has sub-6 5G or low and mid-band. It doesn't have the millimeter wave high band and really very little coverage of that. That's the only thing Verizon's using right now, but works on all carriers, also sold on lock. It still has an eSIM and it has a nano SIM card tray this time around, so yay then. You can't have both the eSIM and the nano SIM active at the same time for those of you who are looking for functionally a dual SIM phone. Call quality on this, that's one thing Moto has been good at since the days of, well, the original Razors, right? Really excellent. We have a mono speaker on the bottom, which is true of the Z Flip as well. Again, we're space constrained here, and it's pretty loud and pretty decent. I mean, this is not going to be like stereo speakers on a big fablity phone. There's that. Technically, the first encounters of the third kind kind of box or Prothean artifact, if you're a Mass Effect person, uh, you can actually use that as sort of a speaker stand to radiate the sound. Now, it's okay. Call quality in part is also very good because this does have four mics on board. When it comes to software, we're looking at Android 10 here, and Moto's typical from the days when Google owned them, fairly clean build with really thoughtful enhancements. And, you know, I don't get to review a lot of Moto phones anymore, and I forget just how enjoyable their software is. Besides the fact the phone feels very fast, 60 hertz refresh display, so, you know, not in that respect. But... It, it, it's very good stuff. And the things like the twist twice to launch the camera, the chop chop to launch the flashlight, uh, the customizations are all things I find are useful and make the phone more enjoyable. For biometrics, we have a fingerprint scanner, and now it's been moved to the center of the rear panel on the back, which looks like a good place, but then again, it's kind of low. When I pick it up and it's open, my finger tends to touch the upper display on it, but still, I think it's an improvement. It works great. It also has face recognition for you know, the 2D, not very secure kind, using the front camera so it works when it's closed or when it's open. Uh, <laughs> They need a software update here or something because I noticed in anything other than bright light, it's slow or it doesn't work at all. And I'm talking indoor, at home, at night, under your normal home lighting at night, and it, it says not enough light. And please fix that mono because tedious. The phone does have an always-on display, and it has lift-to-wake, which is pretty handy. So ideally, when the facial recognition does work, you just pick it up, look at it, and it unlocks. It does not have tap to wake, but as long as it has lift to wake, that's okay. And if you jiggle it around, actually, it'll still light up so you can see your notifications. Battery capacity is a bit higher now, 2800 milliamp with that 15 watt, like I said, 
really normal turbo fast charger that comes in the box. And, you know, I found battery life was pretty good, maybe even a little bit better than the Z Flip 5G. I suspect that's because, well, we have a Snapdragon 765 instead of a higher end processor on board and a somewhat smaller display, 6.2 versus 6.7. Also, because it has an outer display, maybe you're not opening it. I know I'm not quite as often, so you're using the outer display smaller it uses less power but I've had no trouble getting through the day on a charge with this with normal everyday kind of use so that's not bad so that's the Moto Razor 5G otherwise known as the almost immediately released second generation and there is a lot that's improved here I'm really impressed I think you've gotten that idea and folding phones are progressing so quickly it's exciting to see maybe even someday we will have a screen where you can poke your fingernails at it I don't know I think that's one thing that a lot of people worry about other than the price and the price is still a drawback with folding phones I mean you're paying the premium for being able to do what you can do with this phone. But in terms of its internals, it's like a OnePlus Nord or a, a Pixel 4a in terms of the specs that are inside. So you're paying obviously a lot more for the form factor and the folding display. And there's no IP68 water resistance. It's kind of splash proof. It says okay to use in the rain, but you get the idea. There's no wireless charging. So there are still some drawbacks obviously here, but you know, it's a solid phone that I wasn't afraid to use. And if you're delighted by the form factor and you can afford it, well, give it a try. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and hit the notification bell so you know about them.